I am Bernis Abubedulansa. The details now. The Ghana Boundary Commission has begun sensitizing residents living in border communities to help protect the pillars and other markings signifying Ghana's territorial sovereignty. Authorities at the commission set up to harmoniously settle matters concerning Ghana's boundaries with its neighbors to avoid an escalation of tension, say they are conducting an audit of boundaries throughout the country, starting with land boundaries in the Volta region. National Coordinator of the Commission, Brigadier General Emmanuel Kutia, has been explaining to traditional authorities in the area why they should not confront their neighbors in border towns over these land demarcations. Head of our security desk, Gifty Andrapia, has a wrap. The Ghana Boundary Commission is an organization set up to deal with issues arising from Ghana's boundaries with its neighbors. Although the law governing the organization was passed, operationalization of the commission to deal with boundary issues between Ghana and its neighbors happened at the latter part of last year. Ghana's maritime boundary dispute with Ivory Coast, which started in 2010 and ended up in court, is one of the situations the Commission is hoping to avoid by clearing out the blurred lines starting with the land boundaries. Brigadier General Emmanuel Kotia is the national coordinator. We are responsible for ensuring that our land boundaries are secured, the pillars are also well placed and they are not disturbed and for that matter we are also responsible for ensuring that our land boundaries are not tempered with. Now, one of the important things that we need to understand is that the Boundary Commission has become more operational since the latter part of last year. Now, we want to use this opportunity to advise that all RESEC should be very proactive so far as identifying some of the issues of disturbances along our boundaries are concerned, especially the security of um, the boundary pillars. And that the border committees within the various district security councils should be very proactive in identifying some of these challenges. Now, giving us early warning, so far as these challenges are concerned, will help prevent a lot of conflict. We want as a country to live amicably with our neighbors. And uh, as part of our mandate, as I mentioned earlier on, it is our responsibility to ensure that we really discuss with our neighbors or our counterparts from the, very, from the opposite side of our country if there are issues. And I can assure you that currently we have a very good relation with the Boundary Commission of Togo. So when there are issues, we are jointly going to resolve these issues at our boundary. We are not going to resolve it independently. Coming here, they are aware that we're coming here. We've told them that we're coming here. They've told the, all their security uh, uh, personnel along the borders that we are coming to do an exercise here. They should give us all the cooperation. We are in constant touch with them. And that is the way we want to do our work. Going forward, we want to ensure that there will never be a dispute coming out of boundary pillars between Ghana and its neighbors. And that is why that is the main object of the Ghana Boundary Commission. And we're going to ensure that that is applied to the latter. For about two days, his men have been on the ground, along with Immigration and National Investigation Bureau officers, gathering data that will guide the Commission's engagement with its Togolese counterparts. Today, they have just finished briefing him and are taking us to review their findings on the ground. This is the gate that separates two countries. With COVID-19, thoroughfare is not allowed for now. This is one of the pillars meant to show when Ghana's territorial sovereignty ends with Togo. It is lying on its side across the stream instead of being rooted in the ground. Brigadier General Kutia and his men suspect this may have been caused by erosion or other natural causes. But they want to look further to determine whether or not it was a deliberate attempt by anyone to tamper with the demarcations. One of his men explains. So, as I was saying, uh, we don't know whether it was through human activity or it was through erosion over the years that the, the pillar fell. So the exact location or the pillar would have to be determined by 
the surveyors using their instrument to determine the coordinates. Okay. But we pick the current coordinates of where the pillar is lying, okay. and then we we'll forward it to them for them to also do the assessment. Then, if there's any follow-up survey activities, they can come back and then confirm the exact locations. Okay. Where we are standing, we are standing in Togolese territory. Okay. The demarcations on the original map of 1972. A long walk will bring us to another pillar with an inscription to the left, BT, meaning British Togoland, and another to the right, TF, with an arrow in between showing which country owns which side. This is the point of separation of two countries, and without these pillars, each country may lay claim to the entire area. And that can create chaos. And that one identifies the international boundary line. So it's part of our efforts in making, in conducting an audit so far as the boundaries of our countries are concerned. But the priority we have set for ourselves now is to make an audit of the problem areas before we go into other areas that do not, that there are no controversies. That is the reason why we've selected uh, this area as one of the key areas that we have come to do an audit. Now, there are a lot of questions we need answers to on this. Thankfully, the National Coordinator of Ghana's Boundary Commission, Brigadier General Emmanuel Kutia, has joined the show to shed more light. I'm grateful for your time, Brigadier General. And now let's start off with what you, the exercise you did yesterday. Uh, what's your assessment of it? Good morning, and uh, good morning to your discerning viewers. Uh, the assessment was uh, excellent. Um, we had initial reports about uh, certain disputed areas, and uh, we've gone to the ground, we've made our own assessments, and uh, we'll come out with an interim report to advise government on the next step. However, we will have a follow-up mapping survey to be done on the ground using a mapping drone to confirm the various points of the pillars that uh, we have identified that is separating Ghana from Togo. Mm. In the story we just saw, we realized that you mentioned that you had informed your Togolese counterparts that you were going to do this work along the borders uh, yesterday. But beyond that, what is the relationship between the Togolese counterparts, or let me just put it bluntly, the, uh, the immigration and um, boundary commission officials of our neighboring countries? Very cordial. Indeed, the, the Togolese have a similar commission in their country. Uh, we've had various discussions in uh, Lomi and Ghana, Accra, at various times. Um, uh, we communicate on daily basis, not only Togo. We also communicate with the Ivorian Boundary Commission and the Burkina Faso Boundary Commission. Indeed, there is a, a network of African Boundary Commissions, and we are on one platform and we collaborate and coordinate with each other where there are issues. So we have a very cordial relationship with our counterparts, especially in Togo. And in, for Togo in particular, yesterday, the Togolese sent a senior officer uh, to meet us, and he went round with us to inspect the pillars. Going forward, the technical teams of both commissions would meet in the various spots to, uh, which have been identified problem areas to go on. And looking forward, we have jointly identified some spots along our boundary running from the south up to the north, and we are in talks with the Togolese to jointly meet at those places to resolve all the issues that are there. Mm. You, you, you highlighted that you were going to do some audit and all, but we want to understand uh, more what your work entails. Yes, the object of the Ghana Boundary Commission is to determine and demarcate Ghana's land boundaries and delimited Ghana's uh, maritime boundaries. So it is not only on land. Currently, I must I will tell you that we are in negotiations with Togo so far as our maritime boundary is concerned. We are also we also we are also continuing discussions with uh, Cote d'Ivoire so far as the implementation of the Atlas uh, uh, ruling is concerned. So it is not only on land boundaries but also maritime boundaries. 
And the commission is set up in such a way that we have various um, groupings that are in the commission who have been seconded to, commission, to a commission with specialized knowledge so far as issues of land American boundary is concerned. We are also to protect and secure the interests of the Republic of Ghana in determining and demarcating land boundaries and delimitating the maritime boundaries. Mm. There are a number of functions that we do, but our key function is to negotiate with a neighboring country concerning land or maritime boundary disputes between okay. Ghana and that country. Okay. And the emphasis here is to do it amicably and peacefully based on international law. Mm. And do we expect any agreements to be signed, any formalization of the interaction between our boundary commission and that of our neighboring countries? Yes, they raise um, any time that we meet and there is a requirement for an agreement to be signed, it will be. And let me give you an example. In the negotiation meetings that we've been having with Togo, so far as the American boundary is concerned, after every meeting, there is a communicator that is signed. So that is an agreement. And at every level where there is the need, that is done. But I must mention that the Boundary Commission has a board, and the board is made up of certain statutory ministers on the board, chaired by the Minister, for, Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, and then also representatives from various uh, agencies. We have very good relationship with the various security agencies working at the border, at the border. In, uh, within the within Ghana, mm. um, for example, the Ghana Immigration Service, uh, the, the National Intelligence Agency, and what have you, we have been having very good interaction and collaboration with them. Mm. Brigadier General, the pillars we saw in in that story that aired before I started my interaction with you uh, looked quite old. How long have they been there? Some have been. Some have been before independence. Some have been after independence mm. in the 1970s, early 1970s. Mm. Now, one of the things that we are doing as a commission uh, is that, and I, I remember Gifty has given this in his, uh, 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 during a story that he, mm. he, he, he gave much earlier, mm. that uh, the commission became very active in the latter part of last year, yes. Yeah. So we have a lot in our hands. Mm. We're going to, that's why we start an audit, an audit of all the pillars then we will then decide what we are going to do to be able to change or reinforce these mm. pillars. Mm. But the key thing is that we need to do it in collaboration with the neighboring country that is okay. concerned. So if I so get it, Burkina if, Faso mm. along the northern uh, boundaries in between Upper East and Upper West, with Burkina Faso, with the eastern with Togo, with the western border with uh, La Côte d'Ivoire, and even with the maritime boundaries, we need, if there is any need for us to identify or clearly demarcate, we would have to discuss with the neighboring country process. So mm -hmm. it's more of an international issue that uh, we tackling, and the more of uh, negotiations and more of the, uh, knowing the techniques of peace and security in handling these issues. Mm -hmm. So if I get a sense of what you're saying, improving infrastructure along our borders is part of your mandate. And um, yes, in our task, not necessarily improving infrastructure, but the research department can also identify uh, border towns or villages or communities that probably are deprived. Okay. We can advise government for some human security or social intervention in that regard, if there is a need. Indeed, there are, if you look, there is, we have the African Union boundary or borders uh, uh, commission grouping. Now, they also have an, we also have an opportunity to assess certain fundings through that system. We have an ECOWAS grouping, and we have the African Union group. And Ghana has signed the Niamey Nia, Nia, Agreement on the cross-border uh, negotiations with other countries. Mm. All right. Uh, so wh where are you heading next? Um, we're keeping this close to our chest, but we think that there are a number of issues that are coming out. With what Joy FM reported yesterday, we started receiving a lot of calls from regional ministers and districts um, to come to their areas where they have issues mm. with boundary pillars. Uh, we think that we might be heading to the Bruno region next, where we have issues around dollar power and some areas, and then next probably the Upper East and Northeast uh, regions. Mm. Uh, we'll be looking at those uh, areas. Now, finally, well. finally, sir, how long do you expect this entire exercise to take? It may take 
uh, auditing, we're hoping that within two years, we should finish auditing of trouble spots. Mm. And then we can then go into the auditing of other areas that have not been identified as uh, trouble spots. Mm. Now, in this regard, we're looking within a five-year strategic plan or a program that we are going to do this. Mm. And, and this includes uh, identifying porous borders and, and dealing with those uh, issues as well? Not necessarily. They say you, you need to get an understanding. The Ghana Boundary Commission's mandate is quite different from providing security at the borders. That is purely the work of Ghana Immigration, which is responsible for the security of our land borders. However, we collaborate, we collaborate with them. They give us information when they, when they identify that there are issues with the boundaries. Mm. And then they also have an officer seconded to the Boundary Operations Center of the Ghana Boundary Commission. Mm. So uh, will your work be done, this five-year plan you talk about, uh, auditing and, and, and trying to determine what's happening along our borders, Will it be done, uh, will the fixing of infrastructure, like the pillar we saw that was down, uh, be done simultaneously? You have to finish the audit entirely before you begin to look at fixing those uh, pillars and, and, and other demarcations? Not necessarily. We may be doing it simultaneously. Now, what I mentioned was that we're still in talks with the other commissions. For instance, the Ivorians have expressed uh, interest that they want to meet us to discuss issues along the frontier between Ghana and Africa. Now, when we discuss and we come to an agreement, we will then start doing it. But remember, we do this in collaboration with them, so it is going to be a joint exercise. So the two countries, whatever, uh, whichever frontier that we are, we are talking about, would have to discuss, the, and discuss and agree on the timings and even the resources for properly building the new place or replacing the new place or those that have actually been destroyed. Appreciate your time this morning, Brigadier General Emmanuel Kotia is the national coordinator of the Ghana Boundary Commission and he's just been shedding more light on that program. Uh, thank you, sir, for your time.